Okay, so the Section 24 tax changes are now in full swing, which means that for buy to let landlords being tax efficient is more important than ever. In today's video, I'm going to run through how you can possibly beat the Section 24 tax changes and start saving tax now. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're talking all about Section 24 and how you can possibly use these property strategies to beat it and pay less tax. So the first place to start really is all about what is Section 24 um, to start with. So Section 24 was basically announced in 2015, I think it was, maybe 2016, and it changes the way the residential property business, um, the, the interest, how that's treated when it comes to calculating your profits. So previously, um, before uh, 2017, you'd be able to deduct the full amount of mortgage interest you paid, and at the end amount, your actual profits, your cash profits at the end of the day, would be what you'd pay tax on, which was absolutely fine. However, since then, and it's now in force when they gradually introduced it, and now the mortgage interest is not deductible in full at all. So say, for instance, you've got £10,000 worth of profits and £5,000, £10,000 worth of profits before finance costs, you've got £5,000 worth of finance costs, Previously, you'll deduct that £5,000, I mean you've only got £5,000 worth of profits, which you'll pay tax on at 20, 40, 45%, depending on your income. Now, you'll pay tax on that full £10,000 with no tax relief initially for those finance costs. And then what would happen is you'd get a tax credit of 20% of the finance costs. So if you're a higher rate tax pay, if, you're a, if you pay, if you receive high income, if you receive child benefit, you might be liable to the high income child benefit charge. If you're almost a, an additional rate taxpayer, you'll pay more tax there. And also if you're hundred, if you earn about hundred thousand pounds, it could artificially push you over the hundred thousand pound mark where your personal allowance gets reduced and so much more. So the general consensus is section 24 is really bad news for property investors. But there are still a lot of property investors that haven't done anything about this. They've still got properties in their own name. Um, and at the moment, they're doing their tax returns and are quite surprised by their unexpectedly large tax bill because they've not learned what Section 24 is and they've not taken any action. So there are a couple of ways to potentially beat Section 24. We're going to run through those today. Um, now you know what Section 24 is. But for everybody watching, please do make sure you hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe because we post regular tax saving, business money and cash flow saving videos which are going to help you grow a bigger and more profitable property business. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. So the first strategy we've got is all about changing the way you actually use your properties. So Section 24 only applies to residential property. So residential property is one that's held for long-term let, usually six months or so or more. It only applies to that. So if you switch it up, you know, at the moment the pandemic um, is almost over. It's the year of the staycation. Airbnb are stating that they need, um, I think it's half a million or so more properties. It's really a great time to be in the service accommodation space. So if you've got properties that you could use as a furnished holiday let, this is an absolutely fantastic way to beat Section 24. So the criteria to qualify for this is you need to have the property available to let for 210 days, at least per tax year. It must actually be let for at least 105 days. And you can't have a period of long-term occupation, which means a continuous person staying in the property for a long period of time for more than 155 days per tax year. So the way this works in practice is that through the summer months, you let out on Airbnb, booking.com, short-term stays. And then through the winter months, you can put a long-term tenant in there for up to 155 days. And as long as you fulfill all this criteria, you can keep the tax advantages. So the first tax advantage is that you beat Section 24. So all of your finance costs are still fully tax deductible, which is absolutely fantastic and will save you a lot of tax. Other tax reliefs that are available is you get rollover relief and gift relief. So if you sell the property, um, you can potentially roll the gain over into another property. If you give it away, then you can potentially defer the capital gain on that as well. And also when it comes to sell it, you can get business asset disposal relief, formerly entrepreneurs relief, which means you pay just 10% tax when selling it compared to up to 28% for a normal residential property sale. So a massive tax saving there of at least 18%. So it's definitely worthwhile considering doing this whether your property will actually work as a service accommodation unit, look at the actual risks involved, and bear in mind it's a lot more hands-on. Of course, you can get managing agents in place who will do a lot of the work for you. Also, it's worth considering whether you can have a JV partner. 
So if you've got somebody who's willing to run the property, you can potentially do a profit share, but in order to qualify for the beneficial tax treatment, you can't let it to somebody as a corporate stay. You need to bear the risks and rewards of running that business in order to qualify. And also, once you are using the property as service accommodation, don't forget about the capital allowances that might be available in terms of further reducing and saving you tax. So in terms of property investment, using your properties as service accommodation, furnished holiday lets, really is a tax efficient way of doing it and should not be sniffed at. Definitely look as to see whether you can be using it because it's high cash flowing, high ta highly tax efficient and will probably make you a lot more money than the standard buy to let. Other ways you can beat it is to invest in commercial property. So the rules that apply in regards to Section 24 and the mortgage interest only apply to residential property. If you invest in commercial property, the interest costs are still fully allowable, fully tax deductible, which is absolutely great. So maybe if you are looking to invest, if you're really getting into property now, look at whether commercial property is something for you. And if you want to invest in that, doing it in your own name might actually be better because you beat the Section 24 finance cost changes that apply to residential property. Other ways include maybe doing property development. So if you are doing property development, let's treat it as a trade. And as a result, all of the finance costs are fully tax deductible. Um, so that's not caught by Section 24 at all. But the main way to beat Section 24 is if you still want to invest in residential property, you like doing BRI, you like your buy to lets the only real way to beat it is to actually invest through a limited company. So a limited company isn't impacted by the Section 24 changes. All of your finance costs are still fully tax deductible. So if you are looking at getting into property and your higher rate tax power, then over videos on the hallmarks of whether you should be in your own name or in a limited company previously to so check out other videos on my channel for that. But limited company, if you want to invest in buy to that property, is really the only way to actually beat it and to get tax relief on your interest costs. So for anybody that does want to invest in property, maybe look at a limited company, but also bear in mind that you do pay more tax as you put the money in and you pay tax on the profits in the limited company, the rental profits. And also if you want to bring them out as well, you need to bear in mind that you do get taxed twice with a limited company. So you pay income tax on salary, dividends, interest, any rents you pay. So you need to factor this into it. So if you're buying, if you're buying property in a limited company and you want the money to live off, even with the section 24 finance cost changes, you might still be better off in your own name because of that double taxation. Usually a limited company is best for people that are early on in their property investment career that want to build it up and make the most of that lower tax cost in a limited company compared to their own name because they want to reinvest it and they don't want the money for a good number of years. So definitely consider that as to whether you should be in a limited company or your own name. To look at the other people in the business as well, so if you're lower rate taxpayers, then maybe being in your own name will actually be better for you. So really there's no quick and easy way to beat section 24. You need to look at your personal circumstances, where you are now, and then see what can be done to creatively beat it. Whether that is start to using your properties as furnished holiday lets, but of course not every property. Uh, if you've got a lovely three bedroom house in an ex local housing area, the chances are you can't use that as serviced accommodation unfortunately, because as nice as the property is, people aren't gonna wanna go on holiday there and stay there on a nightly basis. Um, but in that case, you've got to look at what you can do, whether it's worth selling it, moving to a limited company, whether it's worth incorporating. So with a property business, if you've got properties in your own name, you can incorporate them. It can be done tax-free in some occasions. So we know about the Ramsey case, which is where you work at least 20 hours. It said as long as you work at least 20 hours in your property business, so managing it, looking for more properties, checking tenants in, then your property qualifies as a business for incorporation relief. And what this allows you to do is incorporate your property business into a limited company without there being any capital gains. Usually you'll pay capital gains based on the market value disposal. So if your property, um, if the properties have increased significantly, this would be a large capital gain you'd have to pay, even though no money's changed hands between yourself and the limited company. So you can do that tax free as long as you work at least 20 hours in the business. And additionally, you'd usually pay stamp duty land tax when you sell it, as it, all based on the market value as you're connected to your limited company. But if you've got a partnership, then you, there's a quirks in the rules which allow for the partnership to actually be incorporated tax-free. This is highly specialist stuff, but as experts on this at JSM, we can actually help you with this. So please do book a consultation. If you'd like to talk more about how we can potentially incorporate your property business, what the options are, um, we're more than happy to run through that with you guys. But other than that, get specialist advice, speak to people that have done this. Um, basically, we'll run through the numbers, see what your options are, and let you know. 
But in this video, we've given you an insight of what's possible, hopefully giving you some fantastic information that's going to help you pay less tax and grow a bigger and more profitable property business. If this video has been useful, please do hit that thumbs up and remember to hit that subscribe button because it really helps us. So I really appreciate if you guys would do that. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, guys.